Okay, it's Atlanta's number one hip hop station, Hot 1079 and home for the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Well, of course, you know it's your fault, B High Radio Shout In. Stepping in the building, I got a new artist that's been tearing up some things in these streets. And Marie, what's good with it, sis? What's up, yeah? I'm over here feeling good, feeling great. And But I had a chance to uh, marinate on this new single with you and that boy, YK Osiris. Yeah. That thing's jamming. You feeling it? Talk to me about putting that banger together. Um, so I had came up with this concept in my head about like, um, I was feeling somebody at the time and I'm like, you know, social media can really ri- ruin somebody's relationship. That's right. So the concept behind it was basically like saying like, let's just keep this between me and you. Mm-hmm. So I heard this beat by this guy named Zeke. Mm-hmm. He had sent it to my email. So I knew I had studio the next day. So I just went to the studio and like, I just built on that concept. I just freestyled it and then. YKL Cyrus hit me like not too long after like let's jump on something Ooh. and I sent him the record and then he just he fucked with it so, I mean rocked with it so yeah no. yeah. now I had a chance to watch that video too and that thing was off the damn chain I mean yeah. and it also looked like y'all had some slick chemistry in there too talk to me about putting that together well I came up with the concept I wanted it to be something fun and, yeah. and you know something that people can really like kind of relate to but as far as chemistry, you know, it's, it's all about the business. That's right. I'm <laughs> so with you. It's, it's all about the business. But, no, nah, you're cool, Gato. Okay. Now, I understand that you're on tour right now as we speak, though. Break that down to me. How's that been? Um, it's, it's been good. Tiring, you know, as always. But we've been selling out um, shows and shit like that, so it's been yeah. decent. What is that like for you, though? I mean, going to these arenas and these events, and them being sold out, the fans coming out to support and show that love, and they singing it right along with you, though, eh? Yeah, it makes me feel like um, this is why I do it. Like, mm-hmm. it reminds me of the times when I be thinking about giving up and stuff. Like, it's really people that's going through what I go through and looking for to me to drop the next single or the song. So when I see that, it just gives me more reason to, like, just keep going and prosper. I can definitely dig that. Now, where you from with it? I'm from um, West Inglewood, Chicago. Okay. Talk to me about coming out of Chicago, though, man. What was that like for you? And how long have you been doing this music? <sighs> coming out of Chicago, I mean, it has, like, pros and cons. Like, uh-huh. it the, the good times and the bad times. It was definitely very hard. But, you know, music was really, like, my sanity. Like, mm-hmm. it was my way of coping and, and like, therapy to me. Yeah. So I've been doing it. I started off with, like, poetry mm. when I was, like, um, I think in the sixth grade. Mm. And then I graduated from poetry to, like, songs, you know, rapping first. Then I started singing. Exactly. So I've been doing it for a while. I've been singing all my life, but really took it serious, like, um, I want to say, like, four years ago, three, four years ago. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, with you being down with the music all your life, what was that tipping point for you when you realized that it wasn't no turning back and that this was about to be a career for you out here? Um, when I started going like to the malls and people would get to screaming and crying and, <laughs> and shit like that, I was like, oh damn. Yeah. Because when people were staring at me at first, I'm like, what, like what, what's good? What y'all looking at? Yeah, <laughs> what's going on? And then they'll just explain to me like how how much I helped them cope with things and stuff Ooh. like that. So I knew like it's more people that depend on me than I do. So exactly. I just knew I couldn't turn back. Talk to me about your music then, and I mean, what kind of messages are you putting in there that's helping folks to be able to get over though? I just want I just want to tell like show females like self growth yeah. you know and, and how to how to become a boss you mm. know what I'm saying and, and stay out your feelings but that's the only thing I be trying to teach people like you know we only live once just go after whatever it is you can go after them and don't you know nowadays people be trying to be like oh yeah fuck feelings and you know all that nah we all got them <laughs> <laughs> we all got them feelings we be all hurt sometimes yeah. I mean, talk to me about when you're going in that studio creating this music. What is the creative process for you out here? Um, so when I go in the studio, I got a lot to talk about. I've, mm-hmm. I've been through like a lot of shit, a lot of stuff. So uh, which? it's not like nothing. It's not. It's nothing. It's not a topic that I can't discuss. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it just depends on like what the beat is making me feel mm-hmm. and like what topic do I want to um, address at that moment. Mm-hmm. I just mainly like go in and just freestyle. Like just say whatever's on my head. Now, I know you say you done been through a lot of stuff. I mean, how transparent are you in that music as far as releasing your stress on them tracks and letting them folks have it? Honestly, like, and my manager can kind of vouch for it. Like, I be kind of skeptical of how, like, deep I want to go with with my story. Yeah. So my manager is trying to, like, slowly but surely bring me out of, like, my comfort zone because mm. I can only talk about so much because yeah. I'm not a very vocal person like that. 
Mm-hmm. But eventually, in the future, I'm going a, I'm to a talk about that, too, because it's not no telling, like, how many people didn't been through the other side of what I haven't spoke about yet. Exactly. So for the things that you do speak about, when you see young ladies and young men as well feeling your pain, man, and rocking with you the long way, how is that for you to know that you're not the only one and that you're speaking for a crew of folks that feel the same way and been through the same stuff that you've been through? It make me feel good. Like, you know, we don't have too many, like, well, I want to say leaders anymore. So I want to be able to, like, be the voice kind of, like, like females coming from where I come from. Like, I won't, like, because me, personally, I didn't really see, like, no outing. Like, uh. It was either probably like I was going to have to take it all the way with school mm-hmm. instead of like really chasing my dream. And I want to be like a a, a living living proof that you could do whatever you want to do. Exactly. So I feel good like with me being from where I'm from and making it as far as I've made it. What was it like when you came to that crossroads when you was thinking to yourself, should I take it all the way with this school or should I follow this dream? How was it making that decision and then how do you feel it worked out for you? Well, it worked out good, but what I think what kind of um, made the decision for me is I um, lost a, a friend through gun violence, mm. and I kind of dropped out at the time. Yeah. So it was like I, I didn't see myself going back to school after that. Like Ooh. I was just like, maybe it's not. Not saying school school is probably for me if I would have if I would have had my heart in it. Yeah. But like I didn't, and I'm glad I did take the road that I did take. Because I'm doing, I'm living my dream and I'm making money. So exactly, I ain't going. It's nothing wrong. Big old facts. Now, I mean, coming out of Chicago with it, is that where your friend passed at? Yeah. How is it up there in Chicago, and what is that atmosphere like? Because being down here in the South, I see it on the news all the time. And I mean, is it as bad as it seems? Yeah, it, it, it is. But you know, we got our <laughs> we got, we got good you? times. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> This is a lot of bad times. We got good times. It is. It's very hard in Chicago. It's, 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 it's very so what hard. is it like for you growing up there then having to navigate all of that stuff and stay alive and stay out of trouble and chase your dream at the same time? Because, I mean, that I think I think that that would be some good advice for somebody else growing up in that same situation as well. Because down here in the South, yeah, it goes down. Mm-hmm. But we have a good time. We party most of the time. Now, if you want to get into that gangster stuff, you can, if that's the life you choose for yourself. But if you just want to have a good time, you can do that as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, where I come from is like one of the like hardest city. I mean, hardest um hoods in Chicago or or communities in Chicago. Yeah. But I just always had like a a, a goal for mm-hmm. myself. Like I've set a goal, and once I set goals for myself, it's not nothing that's gonna stop me from reaching it. That's right. So all I, I feel like if somebody say lay down like the 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 goal that they need and the steps that they need to take it and then you could do whatever you want to do it was it was just that like i just had a goal for myself and i'm like i'm gonna reach this that's right what is it like when you go back to chicago now man after you done shot these videos done toured the world and did your thing in and out of the studio how are people receiving you when you touch back down at home i mean the same way Mm -hmm. i get more love like i can't really walk into malls and stores and stuff like that but i mean it's just I still hang around the same people. Yeah. Know, still, I can't go on the same to the same places necessarily, but you know, it's still the same to me, really. I can dig it. Now, what has been your transition though? Just coming from those humble beginnings and then being in the industry now. I mean, how did you make the transition from you know just growing up in the hood? Now you're over here in the industry maneuvering. Was it everything that you thought it would be? No. I'm not, I ain't gonna sit up and say that because I thought it was gonna be like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I thought it was kind of gonna be like more sweeter. Mm. I didn't know that. Like, <laughs> it's basically like just like exactly. living in Chicago. You got pros and cons with it. Yeah. So, it, but it's 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 more good and bad. You know, I'm I'm further than where I was in life, so I can't exactly. complain. So now, during the times that you were staying down with the music, what were some of the things that kept you motivated and hungry and passionate about your goal and your dream? Because a lot of times, you know, we like to quit. Yeah. So what was it that kept you from quitting? Um, At first, I'm not going to say I didn't take it serious. I always took it very serious. But, like, I um lost somebody again. I lost my sister. Mm. And I saw what it did to, like, my family. Yeah. And I was like, I just got to get us up out of here. Like, they, they stay on my mind a lot. Like, they the, really the reason why I do it. Like, my exactly. family and my close friends, like, they just keep me motivated. Like, to see us have nothing and to seeing us have something now, it's like, I can't stop that. 
Exactly. What goes through your mind when you think about your sister and your friend that passed, though, man? I mean, because a lot of times, you know you had this success and you want to be able to share it with your fam and stuff like that. So how do you maintain your happiness and sanity at the same time maneuvering like that? I mean, it's fresh, so it's kind of like still hard. But yeah. like, I have like very supportive family members and friends that show me and tell me that like she's still here with me within spirit. Mm -hmm. I really wish like because we grew up so hard, like we could have, she could have been here to experience the good times. That's but right. you know, she, I mean, she's still watching. That's, That's what right. keep me grounded with it. Sure enough. Now with these good times, though, mm -hmm. what has been your best time so far in this industry getting busy? Um, my first sold out show in Ooh. Chicago. That's when I knew it was real. Talk to me about that. When you went out there on that stage, you saw the room was packed and you knew it was about to go down, though. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't even sing. Like, I was Are just, you serious? Yeah, I was just letting them do their thing. Oh. So now, having fans, I mean, is this something that you always had all your life or is this a mm -hmm. new thing for you? No, I was I was definitely popular. I actually <laughs> played in a, um, a TV show called The Real Awakening. It was kind of like big at the time when I was in high school. Yeah. In Chicago, it was like on the local TV. Yeah. And all that. So I was known, but it's not like to the point where like I got fans across the country. Exactly. Now talk to me about being on TV though. What was that experience like? I know it was really fun. We just like doing like little teenage improv and, and you know, talking about real situations that happen in Chicago. So it was like a message, like kind of like a Medea type of message. Yeah, yeah. But it was still like that, like showing what's really going on. Mm -hmm. It was fun though, because when I was walking to high school, you know, everybody was. Is that even a thing lit? <laughs> So, I mean, enjoying this wave, who all have you met? Who all have you worked with that have inspired you so far? Um, I mean, just yeah, really everybody I worked with. Um, I'm trying to figure out some names real quick. Mm -hmm. I work with Young Blue. I work with um, yeah. 147 Cowboy. I That's worked right. with, um, I just did something with Jeremiah. Yeah. I worked with Lil Herb. I mean, G Herbo. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked with a lot of different artists. It's it's kind of crazy to me because I thought like I was the only person that worked a certain type of way. Yeah, like just going to the studio, put a beat on, and just and go off the dome. Yeah, like it's 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 like intriguing for me to see like the way that other people work. Break so they down. always bring me like a. It's inspiring, basically. Break down your creative process when you get in that studio, though. I mean, how do you know what kind of funk you' about to bring when you touch down in there? Shit, I don't know. Yeah, I just I just listen. It's the beat, like the beat just. It is it is speak like you could tell when you finna when the beat come in hard like you I gotta do some hard shit on this yeah. or a beat come on you like oh yeah this feel like a a love beat or this feel mm -hmm. like a a boss beat you know that's right what artists inspired you coming up in the game that you looked up to uh, Malia Tupac mm -hmm. uh, S W V Biggie um, hold up now what you know about all this real deal nineties music eh? Stop playing. Talk to me about that because see, you playing. like that real shit. So talk to me about how that real music inspired you now. You know, like you, you, you growing up, your mama got your Sundays come on right. and she playing the old movies, got you <laughs> watching the baseballs. And yeah. I grew up with like listening to I, like the music that was in my era and at the mm -hmm. same time the music that was back when my mama was growing exactly. up. I actually like it better. It's, it seems to speak more of a message than really all the music now. To now, those are some big old facts. So, I mean, how does that affect your creative process going forward? Do Because, see, also what people don't understand, when you put those messages in the music, that allows your music to stand the test of time. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because the ghetto is going to be the ghetto is going to be the ghetto. Mm -hmm. Love is going to be love is going to be love, and the struggle is going to be the struggle. So, I mean, if you're talking about things that resonate with folks on a daily basis that never change, it's always going to be a space for that song to come up. So for you, putting those messages in your music, how has that been? And do you, you know, do it on purpose? So, no, I don't do it on purpose. I just speak what's on my mind or what's in my heart at the time. Like, um, like by me coming from where I come from, the way I say certain things, my delivery on certain things, it kind of like registered to like a, a wide range of audience. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because I can I can relate to the females from the from the hood, and I can relate to females not from the hood. Because right. what I'm speaking is just like like in general overall, like what females want to say. Some females might not be bold enough to say it, but mm -hmm. they be like, "Damn, I, this how I feel." You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So. I just say whatever I feel. Like I, I dig that. 
Now, I mean, I know you talked about, you know, your partner earlier that died from gun violence. What was your take on Nipsey Hussle when he passed, man? Because that wore a lot of folks out. I had a chance to chop it up with Nipsey a few times. And, I mean, when I say he was one of the realest folks that I ever met in this industry, I have to stand by that. So sure. to see him leave as tragically as he did, it's one of those things that makes us all want to quit. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. When you see that kind of stuff, it's like, why are we sure. doing this? Sure. You know what? Well, let's just quit and we'll figure it out later on. How did that impact you? Um, it, I I didn't really like grow up listening to him, but it kind of messed me up because like I was watch I used to watch like his interviews and the stuff he used to yeah. say about Dr. C B and mm -hmm. forgetting about really putting all your money into cars because they lose value. Like once right. you drive them off the lot, do real mm -hmm. estate and bring give back to the hood. Like I feel like we don't got too many of him. Like everybody be so scared of putting the next person on because they feel like they gonna damage their own way. But mm -hmm. he was all about self-perseverance and, and stuff like that. So I really feel like we lost the king. Like, exactly. How do you feel about giving back and helping the next generation coming up behind you get into the game? No, I want to get back. I, I actually, I'm about to start a record label. Talk to so me. So that I can really bring out, like, because, you know, my, my ears really be to, like, the, the screech. Like, I really could see, like, people on Explore or something like that. And you be yeah. like, they hard, but not nobody really going to pay attention and, and be the first person to stamp that unless right. he – grind to the top or she grind to the top and really get all them fans but you can see like growth and and, and, and potential in people and i want to be the person that be like yeah this this person hard i'm about to sign them exactly. like exactly i'm trying to be the next cash money i ain't gonna lie <laughs> that's gonna be dope as hell that's yeah. gonna be dope as hell so i mean what other aspirations do you got in the game though and that you want to give to these folks before you get up out of here just keep going don't let nobody tell you you can't do it and whatever it is you feel like you want to do just Go at it. That's it. That's all. And when you get to speaking that advice and them real facts, though, too, man, because like I say, a lot of us come from the struggle, and people that's watching your videos, they're seeing you on TV, and they see how beautiful it is. They think it to themselves, she got it made. She got it made as easy as sweet as gravy. Mm -mm. Break it down to them about the work ethic and the perseverance that it really takes to be in your shoes and to go to where you're going. Okay, let me use, like, Beyonce or something mm -hmm. like people think like oh yeah I can I, I want to be Beyonce but they don't know the work Beyonce put in it they think they gonna sit on their ass and then a a, a blessing is just gonna fall on their lap you have to put in the grind the hustle the 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 um consistency in order to do this whatever it is it don't come overnight and it takes time to to get to where you're going so just time's gonna get hard you always have like ups and downs but just fight through it like that's it. What is your go-to quote or thought when stuff gets real that keeps your head on straight and keeps you in the game? God give his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. Oh! I feel that right there. I yeah. feel that right there. Lastly, what you got coming up next and anything else you want to get off your chair? Oh, I got a new project coming out. Talk to me. Probably like in, within the next month, I got probably... Six more visuals that's going to drop within that project. Just stay tuned because it's only the beginning with me. Now, hold up. This new project, break it down to me. What's really good with you? You got to give me some. Uh, okay, so everybody keep asking me if I'm going to come back with a, a sequel or Trapola 3. Ooh. I'm going I'm to hold off on that. I'm going to yeah. come back with something a little harder. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could definitely dig that. And how can they contact you, though? Um, Instagram, I am two underscores Anne Marie. Twitter, I'm two underscores Anne Marie. And YouTube, Anne Marie. I can dig it. Hey. Nice man. Appreciate you. Sure. Sis, wish you nothing but the best and much success. Thank you. Be high radio shout. It's out 1079, man. Let's go.